All right, so here is an update on the Craftsman 12 by 36 CNC lathe conversion. Uh, from my best figuring, I see I'm about 90% complete. I still have to build an encoder for the spindle, spindle speed control, and limit and home switches. Otherwise, it is a fully operational CNC machine. We have fancy little operator interface up here running traditional Mach 3. No, it's got a little bit of a glare from the window behind me, but Mach 3. And then we have the mouse and keyboard, e-stop, a manual auto selector to let me drive the spindle without Mach 3 involved, and a USB port, which is just an extension cord to the computer, which allows me to plug my thumb drive in up here. Around the back of the operator box, we can see what I've done. <laughs> Got my relays down here for running the spindle, uh, a USB uh, hub that's running my touch screen, my front port, and was something else that was running on here. Oh, my mouse and my keyboard. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so we have mouse, keyboard, touch screen, and the front USB port. So, uh, power strip to run everything, and we got all the wiring, blah, blah, blah. We know how that works. So, I would have liked to have done this a little bit neater, but I did put the zip ties in where I could to try and keep it at least halfway organized. And then I have a, a board to screw onto the back of this. For the hanger for the control box, uh, you might recognize this as a satellite dish arm. So it's got the, the bracket right there and then the arm here that the satellite dish normally mounts to and some pipe hangers. And then two pieces of aluminum with a bolt run in between them. So it made a made a neat little hanger for me. Works and allows it to, to pivot and hang pretty sturdy. So I was happy with how that turned out. And we come back down to the lathe. Below the lathe we have the little desktop computer here running Mach 3. And then my driver control box and that has my stepper power supply the stepper drivers breakout board and that's running to parallel to the back of the computer and then all of the applicable wiring with the drivers connected to these uh, four pin aircraft type plugs that you see everywhere I'm pretty happy with those plugs uh, I think that they came out, or they, they, they turn out really nice. They're a little bit of a pain to solder, but it's not, uh, it's not horrible. So I'm pretty happy with the quality of them. Now those wires, oh, before I forget, we have one box right here. This is a box that just has a terminal strip inside of it. This is a box that I've put together for connecting my home and limit switches. So it's wired up, but doesn't go anywhere. And then I glued a couple of Neo magnets to the back of the box. And that allows this little guy to just magnet up underneath there and I don't have to physically mount it. So put it wherever I need to to run all the wires to it. So we have the Z-axis motor mounted on a bracket that just clamps down onto the ways. Try to keep things as simple as I could. And then there's a the screw is coupled to the motor. I made the coupler so it's a solid coupler. It's not the the standard type of coupler that you buy that has the little rubber boot in between them. All of the ones that I've put together in here are just fixed couples to the motor. All right, and there's my x-axis. Now the z-axis comes up to a ball nut that's right here, mounted to this bracket. This bracket is bolted. I don't know if I can get it back there enough to see, but that bracket is bolted to the back of the carriage in the locations right down here, right there and right there. That's the location where the taper attachment bolts up to it. All right, then we come out here. I took the standard tool post off, cross light and tool post, or uh, yeah, compound and, and tool post. And I've replaced it with this piece right here, which is the same height as this, 
so that the uh, the quick change tool post mounts to either one of them using the same T-nut mounts right on same height so if I go between manual and CNC all of my tool heights are still accurate still properly set for center and that also gives me a nice big heavy steel mount to put this aluminum bracket which carries my x-axis ball nut so all in all this works pretty good do a reset here so everything seems to run pretty smooth now initially I was going to go through and take this track off underneath here that this is hooked to, but with the larger motor, overcoming that was not a problem at all, so I just left that as intact as I could. The only thing I took off was the cross slide screw to let this move freely based on the ball screw, and just about everything else is still intact on the thing. So Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It's uh, It's been quite a project. It's not completely done. Like I say, there's a little bit more. And I have shot a lot of other video, so hopefully I can get some of that stuff up too, and uh, we can all share some ideas and you know make some stuff happen. Cool.